Hi and welcome to the long-awaited video about the guitars of rain. Today we will learn how to reproduce the sound and also how to reproduce the performance that John and Paul played on the record. You know that I already covered the uh, vocals of Rain in a different video where I explained how the song was recorded, so if you want to go through that. What happened is that uh, the Beatles recorded the bass track, which was composed by Ring on drums and uh, Paul and John on the guitars, at a higher speed. Then they slowed it down to the key where John could uh, sing this one and then speed it up just a little uh, bit. So the official story said that they did that to achieve uh, a you know, fatter sound, fatter drum sound, because when you uh, record um, a sound and when you slow it down, it becomes very, you know, fat and strong. Now, the more I go through this song, the more I am totally amazed by the importance that Paul had uh, into the Beatles sound. What amazes me is uh, um, the dedication that he had, the way he, he got into, into the, right into the song and was able to get up a demo and transform this one into a masterpiece. The pioneering that he had in mind in discovering new ways of using the instrument, new ways of using the guitars, and this of Rain is a typical uh, case. So uh, let's go into just like if you were with him and John and let's go and try to understand what happened in uh, that day when they recorded Rain. So I just imagine John and Paul gathering in a B-Road with the other guys and, uh, and you know, John uh, introducing the song to, uh, to them, just like probably with an acoustic guitar, the first time that they ever heard it, you know, or with, maybe even with the casino, I don't know. But strumming the chords, the normal chord in G, you know, just like he, he, he had it in mind. So something like, uh, he came in and said, I have a new song, this is the song. Uh, when the rain comes, they run and hide the head They might as well be dead And I just imagine Paul starting immediately to think rrr, rrr, rrr. How will I do that? I, how, how can I find us something uh, Get us something from the head, you know, uh, about that And uh, I think I know what, you, what, what how he came out with what happened later He just heard John's guitar playing they run and hide the head And he immediately catched that there was a sort of drone upper singing uh, note going on through the whole song And I think he started, to, you know, thinking about how he could, you know, create, you know, the bass for the, for the, for the song and, and immediately got this drone going on, you know which was very, you know, uh, in phase. When the rain comes, they run and hide their head. They might as well be dead. This one, you know. And, and then his amazing musical cleverness went into, most probably, get the, the electric guitar and think into something, you know, more in uh, crunch, psychedelic stuff rather than, a, rather than a, an acoustic stuff, you know? So he, he probably got the electric guitar and started to experiment. And I just imagine him taking the electric guitar, no matter what, what guitar he had uh, available, most probably the, the casino, the Epiphone casino, and started to uh, translate into the electric sound, uh, that drone that you heard on the acoustic one, you know? So uh, he, he probably got a um, a box and then crunch it up a bit so he got some kind of hard you know and crunchy sound and then he started you know uh, experimenting through uh, around this uh, uh, you know drone uh, that you heard on the acoustic guitar <laughs> Musical, he found this musical environment well, to build up the whole arrangement, you know. And the rain comes around and hide the head. As well be dead. You know, this kind of thing. At some point, he realized that he couldn't use a normal tuning here, he had to use an open tuning. And uh, it most probably started from the higher strings here. 
creating a G chord. That was um, the starting point for this pedal that you heard, for this drone pedal uh, that you heard. And then after he tuned the first strings, he went into an open tuning in the, in the lower ones, you know? So he probably said, I just need the higher strings, you know, to do the, the, the harmony. <laughs> three chords. Of the other one I can open them as well. If we have to reproduce rain we have to do this in order to be able to sing this one and most probably mm, the tuning that we will choose will, will be the G. So what I suggest is that if you have to do a recording of this or a live uh, you mount a heavier set gauge of strings. I can tell that the set you can use may, may also be something like 0, 11 on the, on the high E string. You, on the B string you can use something like a 0, 14, a 0, 18 on the G string and a 0, 4, 30 here, 42 and 52 here. This might be you know, a good you know, uh, set to gauge to, uh, use, to be used. Let's now go through each part. I will first show you the part that Paul did. So you first have to tune the guitar the way I previously showed you. And then another very important thing to understand is that what Paul did on the record was kind of a, you know, uh, yeah, an improvisation uh, makes no real, really sense to follow each exact note in each set uh, way that he played. It's just a matter of understanding the uh, overall arrangement and reproduce it, and it's much more also enjoyable to uh, to play. The very first, you know, chord that we should play is uh, according to what effect we want to achieve this uh, D, G and B string this way or including the A okay. just listen to the record and you will hear this A, uh, a string there anyway we, we first you know, strum this, this three strings this three string and then we move our index and ring finger from the first fret of the B to the third fret of the B. with this guitar
let's now go through John's part. The part that John played is uh, uh, tuned in a different way and uh, there is a different sound on the amplifier, we will go through this later. And it is also different as chords. First of all, the tuning. The tuning is one step down. So the original high E string is going to be a D. The B string is going to be an A. The G string is going to be a F. The D string, this one, is going to be a C. The A string, this one, is going to be a G. And the low E string, this one, is going to be a D, again. Then we have three chords. A standard A, a standard D, and a standard E. So, the A, I put my pinky finger on the second fret of the B string. I put my in the ring finger, excuse me, ring finger on the second fret of a G string, and I put my medium finger and the sec on the second fret of the D string. This is the chord. Then the D. I play this one by placing my index finger on the second fret on the G string, my ring finger on the third fret. One, two, three. Uh, here on, on the B string and then my medium finger on the second fret of the high E. And then the um, standard E chord, which is uh, uh, medium finger on the second fret of the A string, ring finger on the second fret of the D string, index finger on the first fret of the G string. When you play the A, you play from the A string down. When you play the D, basically, you are playing from the D down. And when you play the E, you are playing from the E down.
Let me now show you how I get the sound with my amplifier. First of all, you have to select the treble pickup, so the one you know near the to the bridge, the rear one. Then what you need to have is an amplifier with the uh, EL84. I, I don't have a box, so I just have this um, Korean uh, prototype of amplifier. This one has gain, bass, middle, treble, volume, and a reverb. I, I never use the reverb. And um, so what you need is to crank. A, li a little up the amplifier. You basically start with uh, a, a little gain, just like F, you know, uh, nine o'clock here, and then you adjust the volume to a level that you feel comfortable with. So, for example, this is a sound that I used for John's part. I engage the bright here. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You, you see if you like this one. Then you put the treble up, especially if you don't use any bright switch. You put the treble up to sort of, you know, uh, three o'clock, and then the, the mids as well. The basses you can, you know, keep them about ten o'clock here, and then you, you know, open the gain just a little bit and try how it sounds must be a, a little there must be a little distortion so maybe you can use the high input here exactly so when you when you strum softly you have a clean sound and when you push a little harder it sort of crunches up a bit you know because these other tubes getting driven so this is the uh, sound that I use for John's part you know you know this sound that I like a lot for Paul's part you just have to use the same rear pick up the treble one or near the bridge and you put the gain up a little bit the gain up a little bit and then you have this other tuning that I show you which I no longer have because I tuned the guitar for John's part but um, mm. Basically, what's happening, you know. Then, if you want some brighter sound, you you engage some bright bright switch, which uh, also works. So basically, what you need is a, a guitar with um, a P90 pickup, or just like the Casino or Les Paul with a humbucker, and then you need uh, a amplifier with you know uh, low power, just like 15. What and then uh, EL84 tubes. So, hope you like this video, and this is the last part. Long one, but very interesting. Ciao.